I am contemporary voice and performance coaching. So what does that mean? It means that there are two major buckets, as we talked about last week, of musical singers. Over here we have our classical singers and our opera singers, and they're over here to the side, not because they're not welcome, but because right now taking the stage is everyone else that is in the contemporary bucket, the con on the contemporary side of music. And so that includes our R&B, rap, rock, country, pop, uh, contemporary Christian and gospel, anything that is outside of that classical, formal singing style, that's us. Now, if this is you and you want to learn how to come over to the dark side and learn how to do some contemporary singing, then please come on and join us on the stage right now. So last week we did our first session <clears throat> and we talked about breathing because breathing is foundationally one of the most important aspects of singing. We talked about the difference between breathing for survival and breathing for singing, for those of you who remember that. And I just want to thank everyone for the incredible response that I got to that session. I had so many of my clients tuning in and former clients who I haven't seen in years and I had friends and family tuning in, and it was wonderful. So many of you messaged me. So many of my singing friends have messaged me and said that they either did not understand breathing prior to watching the video on Friday, uh, that it's never been more clear to them uh, since the video Friday, and uh, and some of them just said that they're, they didn't realize how little they were breathing, how little they were focusing on breathing with their singing. Uh, and I really believe that when you learn how to breathe properly, when you learn how to breathe for singing and not just breathing for survival, that it makes all the difference in the world. You are able to then control your pitch better. You're able to um, control your tone. You're able to select what tone you want for that very special moment in the song. You are able to uh, do all those fancy tricks and moves and those runs and those ad libs that we want to do. You're able to obviously hold things out longer. It helps your enunciation. It is just across the board super important that we understand how to breathe. It's going to enhance every single thing that you do. So many clients come to me and they have already figured out a lot of the really difficult things all on their own. And yet, because they did not have the basics of how to breathe for singing and they were only breathing for survival, they were not getting the full potential of their voice, okay? All right, so just a quick reminder, we're gonna do a quick reminder of the breathing session. For those of you who weren't here, in the, I wanna know uh, how many of you, when you watch this, please tell me if you did the breathing assignment, which was to go back and to listen to your favorite singers and listen to them breathe. As I said, many of you have already messaged me and told me, wow, you didn't realize how loudly, how loudly they're breathing shows up on the recording. Um, how loud they're breathing, how often that they are breathing. They're breathing very often a lot more frequently than you may realize when you're listening because we don't focus on breathing when we're listening to our favorite singers sing. We're listening to their voice, but it's really important that we learn to listen to everything that's happening in the recording and breathing is one of those things. So I always tell people that singing is the Singing is the drama queen of emotional communication, right? No matter what you're singing about, it's always on blast, right? If you're happy, you're super happy. If you're sad, you're super sad. If you're mad, you're super mad, okay? And that's what you're singing about. If you wanna have a party, then it's a huge party, okay? If you wanna have a cry fest, it's a huge cry fest. And so with that, the more excited that people get, the more we increase our breathing, whether it's because, regardless of what emotion we're expressing, our breathing is more prominent in the recording, okay? In our, in our expression, which is gonna come through in a recording uh, of singing, because again, singing is the emotional drama queen of communication, okay? All right, so we're gonna do a quick review of the breathing session, and then we're going to get into what I call the alphabet session. I know you already know the alphabet, but we're gonna learn some things about it that you may not have previously known. Hey Ruth, hey Linda, hey Anna, so great of you guys to join me. I hope you'll stick around. Now, if you're here, please go ahead and make sure that you're standing up. 
find it yourself a place where you can rest your phone so that it's at eye level to the best of your ability. You don't really want to be doing this while you're trying to take a voice lesson, okay? We are going to just create sound. We're not going to actually sing, so don't worry if you're not totally at home alone. Uh, no one's going to hear anything, although they might kind of wonder what you're doing. They might come in and then just tell them to join you if they come in and ask, what are you doing? Say, come and find out and have them jump in and join you, okay? All right, so as I said, I'm gonna go back up here and let you guys see what I normally show clients when we're, uh, when we're doing this, okay? So this is my screen here. So last week we talked about the breathing session, okay? And we said that we want to maintain our air tank between 80 and 100% full at all times. So I wanna remind you that your air tank is not some obscure body part in here. I know we talk about diaphragm, I do not because I don't really know how to tap into that diaphragm. So instead, I'm gonna tell you that your air tank is here. So when I say, show me your air tank, you go like this, because it's from your hips to your shoulders. And the reason we include the shoulders is because if I am properly filling my air tank, which is full at 100%, then I am causing my shoulders to move out of the way whenever I fill it up, okay? So let's do that right now. We're not creating sound even. We're just going to breathe in through our nose, out through our mouth. We begin every session right here, regardless Regardless of experience, everyone starts in the same place, okay? So we're going to use our arms. We're going to take a flying breath up to our shoulders. I'll go first. Okay? Now you do that with me. Awesome, okay? Now because we build everything in layers, we're going to add sound with that. We're going to breathe in air and exhale our voice like this. Ah. I took a quick pause in the middle. Don't do that. Okay, so do it one more time. Ha! Ah. Very nice. Now, when we're singing, we do not breathe through our nose. It's just right now it helps us to take a deeper breath and a nice cleansing breath and helps us to relax, okay? Because I don't know about you, but I'm always nervous when I go live, even though I've done this presentation hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of times. Okay, so we're talking about reviewing our breathing, right? So we talked about maintaining our air tank. Let me show you that screen again. Maintaining our air tank between 80 and 100% full at all times. We want to maintain that with two types of breaths. One, the first is called a starter breath, which is the first word of every phrase. And then our catch breath, which is every pause is a breath. And you may not realize it, but that's what we just did. That starter breath is making a breath the first word of your phrase, right? So we're gonna breathe through our mouth. We're gonna breathe in air and exhale voice. And I want you to just repeat what you hear, okay? Ah, ah, okay? So repeat what you hear. Ah, with me, ah, so notice, we're taking that starter breath. Ah! Do that with me. Ah! Okay, that's that starter breath. And that catch breath is a pause, is a breath. I'm not going to go too far into that because I do want to go ahead and talk about today's lesson, which is the alphabet session, okay? So let me remind you real quick, the, the second breath is that catch breath and every pause is a breath, which means if we sing one word, we catch our breath, if we pause, we go ahead and we sing again, okay? So last week I showed you guys, if I'm singing along and I'm singing, baby, you know I love you, right? So that was fine, I didn't hit any wrong notes, but if I take that pause and I fill it with a breath, I'm able to do more after that word, okay? Baby, you know I love you. Because I'm not in a rush, because I have plenty of air, I'm able to play with it, embellish. I can even think about what I want to do while I'm singing, okay? And so that definitely helps. That starter breath and that catch breath helps you to maintain your air tank. Show me your air tank. Your air tank is between 80 and 100% full at all times. Totally opposite of the way that we breathe for survival when we maintain no air reserve, okay? Now, for those of you, hey Lucy, for those of you who 
did tune in last week if you have any or if you just have any questions at all let me know that you have a question uh post your question up and then give me a, a wave so that i'll know to really tune in i'm not wearing my glasses because then it puts a big glare uh so i get not always able to see all of the comments really well okay again thank you guys for joining me all right so we are going to move on to our second the second part of our session. All right, so we are looking at the alphabet session today, okay? Now, how many of you can tell me the vowels of the alphabet? What are the vowels of the alphabet? Do you remember? A, E, I, O, U, for those of us who need a refresher, okay? So notice this first line says, we sing vowels and we say consonants, okay? We sing vowels and we say consonants. All right, so let me explain what that means. So A, E, I, O, U, vowels are our friends. As singers, vowels allow us to create the sound that we want to create. Vowels are what allow us time to embellish, to flourish, to hold out long notes, to create lots of sound, lots of noise, okay? So consonants, are very important because consonants tell the audience what we are singing about okay because otherwise we would just sound like infants in our crib all right so when you hold out any syllable you are holding out a vowel okay so when I say we sing vowels and we say consonants the difference between singing and saying is simply this we hold the vowels. How long we hold out the vowel? As soon as I hold out the syllables, I'm singing. Maybe not very well, but I am singing, okay? And there's definitely a distinction between holding out my syllables and then not holding out my syllables, okay? So we sing vowels and we say consonants. Vowels are for us. Consonants are for the audience so they know what we're singing about, okay? Now, if you notice, when we're speaking to one another, we do not take constant pauses. We pause for dramatic effect. We pause for delivery of the emotion so that we can emote what we're saying, okay? We pause to take a breath. We pause to allow the other person to respond, okay? Every single one of our words is connected as we speak. Notice that? Think about when you're speaking. I know some of you think I'd never pause, but notice even in your own speech, when you are talking, every single word connects to the next word. This is how we sing contemporary singing. We connect every single word to the next word. The difference is that now because you're singing vowels, you're holding out the syllables, you are going to hold out those syllables until the next syllable forces you to move on. Okay, hey Mandy, so great to see you. Okay, so we sing vowels and we say consonants and I'm gonna give you some examples of that, all right? So let's go back to our screen. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Let's go right here, okay, so. This says, call me, I'm on your side. Easy enough to remember, right? Call me, I'm on your side, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. I want you to just repeat what you hear. And when I say repeat what you hear, I mean I want you to, rem to repeat it exactly the way that you hear it, okay? Hopefully, as I said, you're standing up, you've got your space cleared out, you've got your phone in front of you so that it's at eye level and you're not looking down at your phone, all right? Okay, good. So. Call me, I'm on your side. Okay, let's just say that together. Call me, I'm on your side. Now hopefully you're remembering from last week's session that we take that starter breath and that catch breath. Notice I'm pausing after me. Call me, I'm on your side. Everybody catch that? Okay, I hope so, good. All right, so, <clears throat> call me, I'm on your side. Now, repeat what you hear, sorry. I'm reading something. Okay. All right. Call me. I'm on your side. Go ahead and sing that. I'll sing it again. Sing it with me. Call me. I'm on your side. 
Okay, notice how we're holding out the vowels, right? Now, the word call is how many syllables? One syllable, correct? But because of the way that we are singing, it is actually becoming a two syllable word. It's getting two beats, okay? It is getting two different notes. Call me. We're just gonna focus on that one phrase, call me. This is where singers might uh, mess up and not get everything they can out of the sound, that they, the potential sound that they can create, okay? Call me, okay? You wanna sing the entire vowel. You wanna sing the vowel throughout that entire word. So what would prevent me from doing that? Well, let me show you something, all right? Let's see. Okay, there. Great. So I mentioned to you that there are that we sing vowels and we say consonants. So I want to make you aware that there are five consonants that like to pretend that they are vowels. Can you read those out loud? Take a big breath and read those with me. L M N R S. Okay? These five consonants like to pretend that they are vowels. What do I mean by that? What can that possibly mean? Well, let me tell you. We said that we sing vowels and we say consonants, right? Well, I can sing the sound that those letters make, the actual sounds that those letters make. Now, I cannot sing other consonants. I cannot sing right? That's a stutter. I'm not singing it. I'm not holding those sounds out. However, I said L-M-N-R-S. A good way to remember that, as one of my clients pointed out, is it's lemon R S. Okay? L-M-N-R-S. I can sing the actual sound that those letters make. L-M-N-R-S. Okay? Choir directors despise the letter S because it makes everyone sound, it makes it sound like a room full of snakes. S, 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 Because it's almost impossible to get a whole choir to say S at the same time and have it be nice and short. So typically they'll say, hey, four people out of 200 are gonna sing the S and everybody else just hold on to the vowel and, and end the word on the vowel, okay? So L, M, N, R, S, look at the difference. When I sing the consonant, the sound the consonant makes, you tell me which one is a fuller sound. This isn't about becoming louder, like through a fire hose, just like straight out at people, but it is about creating a fuller sound that your voice, you take a breath, you release your voice, and your voice just goes in every single direction, okay? And that, this is how we accomplish that, by staying on the vowel, okay? So you show me, you tell me if you hear the difference. So here's the first one, L-M-N-R-S. Versus L M N R S. Can you hear how the second version is a much fuller sound? You can hear much more of my voice for a much longer period of time. Okay, one more time. L M N R S versus L M N R S. You stay on that vowel until you are all the way done. So I want everybody to try that with me. We're not even gonna do the wrong way. We're just gonna do the right way, okay? So start with me. L-M-N-R-S. Great, one more time, big breath. L-M-N-R-S. Okay, can you feel that? Can you feel how your voice is just going out in every direction? I hope that you do. Okay, so let's go back. I'm gonna remind you again of the phrase that we were working with, and that phrase is right here. Okay, and I'll leave that up so you can remember what those are. Call me, I'm on your side. Okay, so just that first phrase. Now do you see what I was talking about? How I said it's call me, right? Because what a lot of singers might have a tendency to do is they might go, call me. See how much smaller that is? Call me versus call me. I am not doing anything differently. It may sound like I'm raising my volume. I'm not. It's that the first version, call me, is blocking the volume that I'm projecting. Okay, by closing my mouth down to that L. Here's the thing. So in session one, I told you guys that we breathe for survival very differently than breathing for singing in that breathing for survival, we do not maintain a reserve. 
So likewise, in the alphabet session, I'll tell you that when we talk to one another, we go blah, 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 right? Our mouth is closed, blah, 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 blah. But in the, uh, when we sing, we, it's more of an open mouth, hum, 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 okay? Think about it. If I walk up to you to talk to you, I'm probably gonna walk up, blah, 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 blah. But what if I walk up to you like this? Right? You're going to wonder like, oh my gosh, what's about to happen? She seems really excited about something really animated. Okay? And that is how we sing. We take a breath and we open our mouth and we go um, 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 um. Okay? Now, the reason I'm going um is because, remember last week, I want to remind you, you take those fingers here and if you want to get more voice out, you need to find that space between the upper and lower jaw. Ah, uh, take that big breath and repeat what you hear. Ah, ah, okay, listen, ah, with me, ah, all right, now, I need you to let me know if you're having trouble doing that, and then I can explain it further, let me know where you're struggling, okay, all right, so, when we sing, it's um, um, um. You got to open up your mouth, open the back of your jaw, take a big breath, and then you just release your voice. It's going to come out. You never have to push. Projection just happens naturally. It just comes out, and it just comes out and goes in every single direction that you want it to go into. Okay? All right. So the phrase is, call me. I'm on your side. Okay? I want you to sing that with me. Ready and go. Call me. I'm on your side. Now, notice, I am not saying your, your side. I'm singing your side. R is always pronounced A-H-R. When we sing your, anytime you sing your, right here I've got for, over here I've got sure, okay? We may say your for sure, but we don't sing your for sure, because your for sure, when we sing it, sounds like your for sure. Okay, it's your for sure. Okay, it's always pronounced A-H-R. That gives room for that jaw to stay open and that vowel to launch our voice, okay? All right, so let's see. Let's look at our next phrase because I definitely want to talk to you about that next phrase, okay? So that next phrase says, uh, I'll just leave it there. Okay, you will love me now for sure. Now, we already talked about for sure. You will love me now for sure. Say that with me. You will love me now for sure. Okay. So, the reason we're saying it like that is because for some reason, so many singers think that the word love is pronounced love. It is not pronounced love. My clients who are watching, Yes, I can already hear you. You're saying love. It's a big word, whether you're singing about how wonderful it is or how scary it is. It's a big word, love. There are some words, so many words in the English language that when we, well, in any language, so many words that we use that when we sing them, a really great singer is going to sing them in such a way that they paint a word picture with the way that they are expressed. And love is one of those words that should always be very, very big, love, okay? So, it's not love. See what that does to my tone? Love, love. Why? Because I am dropping down my jaw, okay? All right, let's see. Uh, all right, let's see. Let me go back and look at that so you can get that whole phrase again. All right. You will love me now for sure. With me? You will love me now for sure. Okay, so. We are going to sing, you will love me now for sure. Okay, with me. You will love me now for sure. Now notice, let me turn this around and I'm actually gonna walk over and point to something here. How many L's do we have in a row here? We have one, two, three. Three L's in a row, okay? I know my clients know the answer to this question. How many L's do we actually need to pronounce in that phrase? 
You will love me now for sure. One, one L, only the L on the word love. We don't need all of those because if we sing all of them, here's what will happen. You will love. So not only did will get small, but love went back to that love that we don't want to say because it's not big enough. Right, because love is a big word. You will love me now for sure. With me? You will love me now for sure. And if you're not able to start on the note I'm starting on, and if you are able to pick your own note, please pick your own note. This isn't about singing the exact notes that I'm singing. It's about singing in the exact method that I'm singing, okay? All right, I know a lot of my guys, they like to transpose and do all kinds of things, and I am totally good with that. Okay, so we mentioned, anybody remember those five letters, those five consonants? L-M-N-R-S, lemon R S. okay? that we wanna make sure that we stay on the vowel. Okay, so there is one more consonant that we are going to look at. That consonant is the letter H. H, if we are not careful, H is just a big fat invitation to exhale. <sighs> okay, now, here's where I know some singers are going to disagree with me. I'm okay with that, okay? Because you can sing your way and I'll sing my way, okay? so. Here is a different way to sing the letter H because a lot of times people feel like, let's say it's a worship service, let's say it's an altar call, let's say it's a really tender moment, okay? And you're singing holy. And so you think you wanna go holy. I can barely get that out. Holy, okay? Because I'm, I'm that H is exhaling too much air. I'm like, wait, it's a tender moment, that's what I want. But see, you can also achieve what I call quiet intensity by simply taking down your volume, but keeping your voice very present. So what I say is, I want you to see this phrase here. It says that H is, is exhaled to launch the vowel, okay? H is exhaled to launch the vowel. So see that phrase there? It says, hey there, hi there, ho there. Say that with me. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Now, Notice how I didn't go, hey there, hi there, ho there. Because naturally when we speak, we H does not interfere with our full voice being projected. Hey, what you doing? Hi, ho, okay? It doesn't interfere, but when we sing, for some reason, it does. We exhale, hey, okay? So we're gonna say that again. Hey there, hi there, ho there, with me. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Now we're gonna sing that, listen. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Notice how you don't hear air coming out. You may hear it going in, but you don't hear it coming out. Okay, we breathe in air, exhale voice. Let's say that again. Hey there, hi there, ho there. With me. Hey there, hi there, ho there. One more time. Hey there, hi there, ho there. So let me know if you're getting the hang of this, of what I'm talking about. Okay, so now going back to, I mentioned so H is exhaled to launch the vowel, just to remind you of that phrase again, okay? So earlier, a few moments ago, I showed you holy and we said holy, okay? Which I can barely get out, you can barely hear me, okay? Uh, again, maybe a tender moment and we want to create a quiet intensity and I say that instead of just dropping and drenching it full of air where nobody can really hear you and then you have to overly rely on this on the microphone, why not instead just take your volume down and keep your whole voice present? It's more challenging, but I think it's um, a stronger presence, okay? So you would still take that breath and you would still sing with your whole voice and you would just take your volume down. Oh, holy, oh, holy. See what I'm doing there? I think it's more authoritative and more present, okay? And let's see, what else are we gonna, oh, so let me show you guys an exercise that I use here in the studio. All right, so we call this here, this is our cartoon villain laugh, okay? Because cartoon villains, when they laugh, they don't go, ha, right? How do cartoon villains laugh? They say, oh, ha, 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 right? Oh, ha, 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 go ahead and give it a shot. Let's hear your best cartoon villain laugh. Ha, 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 ha. 
Remember to bring your voice to the front immediately. No air, it's not ha. Many of you may hear yourselves first going ha. That first ha will have a lot of air. Ha, 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 ha. But remember, you wanna get that voice right to it. Ha, 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 ha. Okay? All right, so I'm gonna move you through these. I'm gonna go back to that screen. Okay, so listen. Ha, 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 ha. With me. Ha, 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 ha. Remember breathing before each one of these. Listen. <laughs> and take it up if you can. Breathe with me. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> Good. Okay, we're going to go to ha. Huh? Listen. Ha, 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 ha. Want to really dig that out? Ha, 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 ha. With me. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, okay, next is he. Okay, oh, that had a lot of air in it. Let me fix that. He, 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 he. With me. He, 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 he. Again. He, 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 he. Great. Next is ho, and we all know how this one's exact, supposed to sound. We know exactly what it sounds like because we've heard it our whole lives. Ho, 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 ho. See if you can really drive that down. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, all right, with me. Oh, 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 oh. One more time. Oh, 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 oh. All right, the next one says, whoo. Now, I want to remind you guys, last week we did this, so let's do it again. This is our cartoon villain. This happens to be an owl, and so we're going we're gonna to tap into our inner owl, okay? So we're going to, I'll, I'll go first, all right? You really got to drop that jaw. This is gonna help us to really, for some clients who really aren't even sure what is the difference between my head voice and my chest voice, and I definitely will cover that in depth in a future lesson, probably maybe tomorrow or Wednesday. So we're going to, for now, I just want you to trust it. I just want you to go into your, now this is, if you sound like a wolf, you're not dropping your jaw enough, okay? So you're gonna take that big breath, you're gonna use your core, okay? And you're just gonna go, okay? Listen again. Try that with me. Great, one more time. Okay, and I want you to extend it the way you're hearing me do that. Okay, listen one more time, listen. Great, with me. Okay, are you feeling that? Are you really feeling that resonate? Not just up in your head, but it should be resonating closer to the front than the back. Okay, I'm gonna do it one more time. Next, we're gonna build on that. I'm always building. You know what? I'm gonna get a drink of water real quick. I hope that you have water. I forgot to tell you guys you get water. Hopefully you wouldn't try something like this without water handy. Okay, so we're gonna build on that. So we've got our owl and our owl is teaching us our shape. Your owl is teaching you your shape. Woo! Okay? So you're gonna go back to that shape with this next sound, because this owl happens to be in the Marines, and the Marines say, hoo right? I mean, I were doing that exactly right, so don't correct me. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that hoo and we're gonna go back to it with our wah, okay, like this. hoo Okay, one more time. hoo Great. So, I think I forgot. I forgot to plug something in, okay? Are you guys hearing me? I'm assuming you're hearing me or you wouldn't have stuck around this long, okay? So, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna let that owl fall, okay? And I want you to notice how your voice can go through certain tones, okay? Thank you, good. All right, do that with me. what sounds like my speaking voice. It's my, my chest voice, my speaking voice. I'm falling through all these tones until I get down to my speaking voice. Okay, you hear all that little bit of shifting? I call it your, your vocal chemistry set. You just take out your little vocal chemistry set and you just keep sprinkling in a little bit more chest voice as you come down, okay? We can do the same thing going up. We can go, 
Ah, oh, starting in my chest voice. See how it sounds just like my speaking voice. Oh, and that's why I have you do that before we even start singing so that you will realize it's not about learning. It's about realizing the realization that you already know how to make these transitions. You already know how to flow through tones. Okay. I demonstrated last week. What if you were saying, what? No way. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. You could do that. If someone asked you to do that, if it was a role in a play, and I said, those, those are your lines, go on stage and, and do that. You could do that, right? Okay, it's your voice immediately, notice my voice immediately goes to the middle of whatever tone that I'm speaking in. I'm not having a strain to reach that tone. I can automatically speak in whatever tone that I want to speak in. And those are singing skills. They're speaking skills that you need to bring over here and refile over here in the singing folder that you may have thought was empty or you thought it was emptier than you thought it was, okay? Because you have a lot of singing skills you just need to recognize once you pull them over from your speaking skills, okay? All right, let's see. One more thing we have not talked about. Let me go back over to this screen here so you can see this. Okay. This word is glocking. I know that in a more formal setting, they'll probably say glottling, uh, but I'm gonna just say glocking, okay? Because I feel like the word glocking sounds more like what we're actually doing. And so a lot of times my clients know, I say, oh, what is this word? And you say, what? Did you say, uh? You would be correct. This word is, uh. So it is, we are pronouncing uh, we're not saying huh with an H in front of it, we're saying uh, from a closed to an open throat, ah, uh. okay? So again, the vowels of the alphabet, we're gonna slow down and we're gonna say those vowels again because this is gonna help us to demonstrate glocking. So it's A-E-I-O-U, A-E-I-O. We glocked those vowels. We didn't say hey, he, hi, ho, you. And we didn't string them together into one word. We didn't say, hey, yeah, yeah, yo, yo. Hey, yeah, yeah, yo, yo. Now that sounds silly. We're like, well, of course we wouldn't do that. We know not to do that. Well, the same thing applies to singing. When we sing words that begin with vowels, we want to glock those words. Now, I do not mean every single word that begins with a vowel. If you look here, let me show you this example that we have here. Okay. <clears throat> so this says, are you as happy as I am? I'm looking at the bottom line there. Are you as happy as I am? Are you as happy as I am? If I'm expressing that line, and I'm trying to do it with a little bit of drama, okay, a little dramatic effect, I am gonna say, are you as happy as I am, okay? Now, if I still want that dramatic effect and I don't glock those particular words that have pauses in front of them, it's gonna sound like this. Are you as happy as I am? Okay. And if I put H's in front of it, it might be, are you as happy as I am? It doesn't have the same effect. It doesn't have that same snap. It sounds kind of weird to even say it like that. But a lot of times, if we aren't careful, that is exactly how we will approach it with singing. Okay. So it is, are you as happy as I am? Now notice, let me go back to it real quick. Okay. So, how many, I mean, there are lots of words in this phrase with vowels, are, as, as, I, am. And I'm not glocking as and as, because then that would be, are you as happy as I am? And now it doesn't sound real anymore. That, that's just not the way that we speak. We don't say, are you as happy as I am? It almost sounds like I'm more upset and being sarcastic, right? So instead, I go, are you as happy as I am? So listen. Are you as happy as I am with me? Are you as happy as I am? I hope you notice I'm not only glocking I am at the end, but I'm also taking catch breaths. And if you're like, how do you possibly breathe in between that? A catch breath, remember, I'm full of air because I took a good starter breath and filled all the way, where's your air tank? I filled my entire air tank before I started the phrase so that when I got to I am, I only needed tiny little breaths. Are you as happy as I am? It is the shortest little pop up to fill back up with air and that's what gives it that nice fresh snap. Okay, it gives it that pop. Okay, very good. Let me see if I missed anything. So we looked at 
the walking and that and then. Hey, all right. That is the end of our alphabet session. Okay, so one quick, quick, quick review of everything that we talked about. Okay. So today was our alphabet session. We said we sing vowels and we say consonants. All right. We just talked about glocking. If I say what's a glock, you say uh. So what's a glock? Very good. It's when we pronounce, it only applies to words that start with vowels and we sing words that start with vowels the way we say words that start with vowels. So if you were to speak the phrase, speak the lyric in the timing of the song and there's a pause in front of a word that starts with a vowel, then you will want to glock that word, okay? There are five consonants that like to pretend they are vowels and what are those words? L, excuse me, letters, L, M, N, R, S, those consonants, L, M, N, R, S, lemon, R, us. Okay, very good. And H is exhaled to launch the vowel so that we don't get it all breathy. I've had so many times where singers go, well, I'm, I'm taking a really good breath and I still run out of air. And it is because now H is the only, is not the only letter that will cause you to do this. Uh, you could be exhaling throughout your phrase. You And again, that glocking, if you aren't glocking in the right places, which is singing words that start with vowels the way you say them, if you aren't doing that, then you potentially are putting H's in front of those words and you're exhaling and you don't realize it. You're losing air as you're singing, okay? Like right now, I just said you're losing air as you're singing and I, if I go, you're losing air as you're singing. I just put an H on as and it became has and then I exhaled with it. And that's why I'm running out of voice, uh, running out of air, and then my whole voice isn't heard because anytime you add air to your voice, it's going to diminish your sound. And so you're putting out all this effort to have a nice full sound and then you've got all this breath that's in it and you're no longer gonna have the sound, okay? That's also going to wear out your larynx. It's really important that we understand these, these, two, these concepts of the breathing and the alphabet together because one universal, you know, I mentioned that over here on this side of the house, we have our classical singers and our opera singers. And then over here on the main stage right now is all of us contemporary singers because this is contemporary voice and performance coaching. But I will tell you that there is one thing that we universally, 100% of singers will all agree to. Every single one of us, I don't care what style we sing, I don't care if it's rap, I don't care if it's rock, I don't care if it's classical, we will all agree universally on one common denominator and that is this, that every one of us as singers, we want to produce the best possible sound with the least amount of strain on our instrument. Okay, and that's how you're gonna do that. You're gonna do that with really good breathing and with really good enunciation. So if you missed the breathing session, please go back to Friday's uh, live video and pick that up. Sanjay, very nice to see you. Thank you for joining. What is the time right now here where I am? The time is 1.45 p.m. on a Monday afternoon. Okay, I wanna tell you guys that I'm gonna go live every single day. I think tomorrow we're going to talk about the difference between pitches and tones. Pitches and tones and understanding the relationship between the two and how important it is to know how to use one in order to navigate the other. Okay, so again, Friday was breathing, today is alphabet, and I think tomorrow we're gonna do pitches and tones. Um, there's a lot of different things that we cover, so if you have any questions at all about singing, uh, about performing, because this I also do artist development, so there's a whole, whole segment on artist development that we can talk about as well. Please let me know. You can private message me and let me know if that's something that interests you. Hey, Diane, so great to see you. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that. Thank you, Diane. I appreciate that. I hope you guys uh, picked up some fun tips that you can use when our choir does finally get to resume. We have a 250 voice choir at Bellevue Baptist Church here in um, Memphis, Tennessee that has not been able to meet for weeks and we are all starving to get together and sing together again. And so um, hopefully this helps to feed that just a little bit and help us feel united and together. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm voice coach Lisa Marie with CVP Coaching. Have a blessed day.